let's start today's discussion. So what we're going to do today is start the discussion on the material on chapter 7, which is mostly very similar to our discussion uh, uh, in chapter 5, which are this, the simple uh, circuit analysis of single stage amplifier. But instead of having bipolar junction transistor, we'll have, we're going to substitute the same type of architecture by this, uh, the new device, which is the MOS transistor. So uh, with this new introduction of transistor, you're basically the operation or behavior of the, de uh, the circuit is actually very similar. There, there, of course, there's differences, especially in input resistance. For example, in most of these architectures, uh, for, for example, for common source and common drain structure, we basically have an infinite input resistance. So in terms of analysis, it's actually much easier. But of course, there's, di there's also differences. So we're going to talk about uh, the main differences, but I'm going to go through these analysis much uh, faster, I, I would expect, uh, because uh, we already go through the similar analysis, uh, just uh, substituting with uh, another device in terms of analyzing the different topology of uh, single stage architectures. So what we're going to do, of course, is the same. So we're going to talk about biasing circuit. What is the difference in terms of biasing a bipolar junction transistor circuit or a MOSFET circuit? There's main differences, but uh, I would like to emphasize uh, once again, because some of you asked me about these type of question, is that um, if you're actually doing more like integrated solutions, for example, if you're doing integrated circuit design, for example, in most cases, you don't actually want to introduce what we call the passive components, such as a resistors or capacitance. Those are very expensive and very hard to get components. So if you can avoid that, if your circuit can avoid any of these passive components, it will actually make your design much more robust or uh, consume less area, and it will be actually much more stable. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, but in, in the example we're going to use in this analysis, we're still going to have, you're going to see resistive loading or resistive dividing circuit. But in real case, in integrated solution, especially for MOSFET circuits, because MOS transistors, you can actually have transistors much easier than having these resistors. Therefore, in order to make a good biasing design, the, the actual biasing in the circuit, we're going to talk about that later in uh, chapter, I believe it's chapter nine. Uh, uh, we're going to skip chapter eight. So chapter nine, we're going to talk about something called current mirror, which are the most common way of biasing a circuit rather than using this type of structure. But we can still go through this type of discrete. If you're having a discrete device, then that's the biasing we're going to use, OK? So we're going to come back to what we're going to talk about biasing circuit. These are for discrete circuits biasing. So. In integrated solutions, these are not the solutions that you're going to use anyway. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then the other thing is that uh, we're going to talk about three types of topology, which we have already go through in BJT uh, counterparts, which are, in this case, because the naming, the, the terminal changes, therefore it's called a common source architecture, common gate, and then, of course, common drain. The other word, you kind of, you, you, probably more familiar with or more commonly used are called source follower, which is the source follows in the gate, the input. Okay? So as we already talked about, these three types of structure depending on which terminal is being common. For common source, of course, we'll have our emitter common and the input coming in from gate output going out uh, from drain. And for common gate, you, you then will have an input uh, at the uh, source terminal and then output at the drain terminal. The other, the last part is the follower circuit, which will have input at the gate, output at uh, source. So that's called a source follower. These three types of structures, we're going to address that and analyze its uh, behavior a little bit through the two-port model as well, input, output, resistance. So for these threes, you will be expect to find its input resistance, output resistance, and of course voltage gain as well. Okay? So we're going to talk about, for common source, of course, there's source degeneration. You can actually have resistance at this terminal. Uh, it would basically have similar 
uh, impact because, um, but there are slight differences. So we're going to address the difference between this type of structure using MOSFET and that of using bipolar junction transistors, okay? So first we're going to start talking about biasing circuit. Uh, when we talk about biasing circuit, you will find that for MOS structure, it's actually much easier because you don't need to concern about base current because my collector, remember here, IG equals DC current equals to zero. So you don't need to uh, even make the assumption that base current is small or, or to make this much, much larger than that, you, there's no consideration of that because the current is zero. Therefore, if you're doing the simple voltage dividing biasing, this is the voltage divider circuit, it's very easy. You want to use this biasing circuit to set your particular VX. So the basic idea in most of these type of biasing design, uh, typically in biasing design, typically we start with the request. In biasing design, what we want is that I want to set IDQ to a certain level, a level, let's say, 1 milliamp. So this is by request of your performance. So you de define this by the performance or your expectation or whatever gain you wish to uh, obtain out of the circuit, and then you want to set it to this particular point. So typically what we want is that we want to have a parameter which by designing R1 and R2, I can set it to my target level. So what is typical being done is that this is the biasing circuit equation. This is the transistor current equation, IDQ. I want it to be reach a certain target. So you set the target and then solve for R1, R2. Right? So you determine where you're going to place or the ratio of your frame so that I can stand at a particular location. And this location is being set by the requirement of where I want to stand. So in the design problem, typically what happened is that I decided where I wanted to stand and I'm come back to determine where R1 or R2 is. That's a design problem. But in real cases, if this is being set, you can determine your current. So this goes the other direction, depending on uh, how the question is being placed or being set, okay? So this is fa fairly straightforward. Once I have my voltage being set, I could then have a determined current, meaning that the current can be first order, first order determined, meaning that it's actually much more precise. You can, what I mean by first order placement, meaning that I could pretty much know where it's going to be. Uh, what is the second order placement? If your current, depending on this very strongly, or, or VDS is where you place your location, that will actually cause a problem is because you have very weak control uh, because this parameter, you have a weak control. Therefore, you want to have a parameter which has a strong control so that you can set it to the particular location, okay, more easily, okay? So, uh, so once we have this IDQ, if I decided to place it in the target level, this is what I, I just arbitrarily set a target level. So what is the source of variation? Anytime you set, uh, you design a biasing circuit, how does one evaluate whether this is a good or bad biasing circuit? As I discussed before, what you want is to make sure that every time Setting the operating point is um, determine where I'm going to stand when I'm doing the speech, for example. So that I want to make sure that every time I do it, I would then stand within the spotlight of my design. Does not deviate too much. So the deviation from time to time would then be the key of evaluating whether this is a good biasing design or not. So we're going to talk about sources of variation as we already talked about in previous discussion, like if, if the current itself depends strongly on beta, for example, we know that beta is a very uncontrollable parameter, therefore that's the one that you want to avoid. But in this case, there's still slight, uh, any problem? VX, that's a good. VDD. You guys, yeah, so I should divide it. 
Correct. I want to make it into a ratio, so I'm dividing this down so it's 1 over 2. Right. So, correct. Yeah, yeah. so I want to make it into a ratio. I'm going to discuss it why. So uh, once we have this equation, then you talk about what will lead to variation in your ultimate results. So first of all, because it's Bx dependency, therefore the control over, you want to make sure that this level is always whatever it is. The, uh, from circuit to circuit, you have multiple, if you make multiple circuits, you want to make sure that all of them deliver the same level. So if there's variation in VDD, for example, there's your source voltage, that's very common because every time you, uh, typically we assume that we're applying a voltage, uh, for example, 3 volt or 3.3 volt, the tolerance level is typically 10%, plus or minus 10%. Meaning that I'm comfortable to, if I said that I'm giving you, it's like the ripple voltage. If, I t if I'm telling you that I'm giving you 3 volt, it may be somewhere uh, around 3 or and 3.6. So there's a variation, the tolerance of your supply voltage. So this would then lead to your biasing current being shifted once this happens. And also the other uncontrollable parameter, of course, is threshold voltage. As we already said that this is a key parameter of transistors. If you ever do a simulation or circuit tape out, what, it, what you're typically being asked is that you wanted to simulate the extreme corner. So one of the most uh, variation components actually coming from threshold voltage variation. This is one of the key. So once you have this variation, threshold voltage variation from device to device or from batch to batch, then this will be subject to certain variation, especially when the parameters when these levels are sh very small. So a little variation would then lead to large overdrive differences. The other thing, of course, is resistors ratios. That is why uh, this is slightly less problematic. One of the things I wanted to emphasize is that typically, um, if you want to evaluate the source or the, um, the level of variation onto your circuit, Typically, the control of absolute value, for example, threshold or resistor itself, the resistance itself, the control is, uh, is less, um, you would then have less control of the pre absolute value. You actually have better control of the ratio. So ratio itself is not that bad because if one goes up, the other goes up together, therefore the ratio remains relatively constant. So this is the least variation. So I listed from the, the most significant and this is the least significant because it's for ratio, typically ratio is less sensitive. But it still exists, less sensitive to process variation. Process variation meaning that you variation. So if you're, if you're designed depending on R2, the absolute value of R2, then that will be subject to more variation. But it, in this case, it depends on ratio. Therefore, it will make it less sensitive to variation from a device to device. OK? So let's look at another part. Another one that we have already discussed is the self-bias stage. We, all, we, all, we, we have already discussed this one for a BJT circuit. We're going to use that onto a MOSFET circuit. And to further stabilize this self-biasing circuit, we could actually add the generate. So I'm going to also do the generate in the example, you could add, you, you could have it with or without self stage with source degeneration. So this is one of the examples you can use. I'm going to go through an example. So we use source degeneration, and then we use a self-biasing stage. Self-biasing meaning that I'm using the gate voltage, uh, the drain voltage to bias the gate. Okay. So if you look at this structure, um, it might seem a little weird. In, 
If I want to realize a common source uh, architecture, uh, sorry. So this is RD. Typically, what happens is that you would then have your output terminal. For AC analysis, this will then connect it to the VL. And this will then connect it to your source, right? So these are coupling capacitance to the, the couple DC and AC components. So the, the intermediate, uh, the, the white part is actually for establishing your DC biasing component. So remember when we have a bipolar junction transistor, then there will be a voltage drop between the two, right? So because there's a DC base current. But now there's no collector, uh, there's no gate current, DC gate current is zero. So what is the purpose of having a RG if you come to think about it? So why do I need this? Because there's no current. I could, can I just take it away? What do you think would happen if I take it away? So what is the, if I take it away, how do I determine this would then be floating, right? So what is the difference, even though there's no current, what is the difference between having RG or without RG? Let's first write down the equation, and then you can think about the reason why I want to keep RG. So if I just assume that we're going to use this structure, so we can analyze the uh, the main thing to determine the drain current, of course, is by first order is by VGS. This is VGS. So anytime, this is the same as VBE. Anytime you want to determine a collector current, you need to determine VBE because VBE is the most dominant uh, voltage which will affect your current. So the most dominant is VGS. So we need to want, find out what VGS is. So you write down the equation regarding this whole loop starting from here. So we're assuming that there's a biasing current, IDQ. This is the target we want to, re to reach. So VDD equals to IDQ times RD. So this is the voltage drop across here. This is to make sure that there's no current flow. Therefore, this voltage equals to this voltage. So the drain voltage equals to gate voltage. Right, so let me write it down. So VDG plus uh, VGS plus IDQRS. This is assuming that source current equals to, because there's only one current pass. Right, so the current is coming down. Let's say this is the IDQ. This is the target we want to set will then equals to this. It will be the same, right? And because I'm bridging this, if I'm not bridging this, this will not be set as zero because this equals to what? This equals to IG times RG, okay? So this is zero. So you'll need to include that, therefore your VDD uh, and the other is ID equals to, I'm going to write down the equation, mu NC aux, N channel transistor, minus RS plus RD. So once we have this, we can actually get VGS. VGS equals to VDD minus IDQ RS plus RD, right? So once you get rid of this, you can get VGS. And I'm going to substitute in VGS into here. I want to move to this. Sorry. This equals to zero. So we know the current equation is VGS minus VTH. 
squared. Well, I'm ignoring uh, channel length modulation, in fact, just for now, because for biasing analysis, typically this can be ignored, just assuming lambda equals to zero for now. So then you just insert this back in. This will then be determined by mu and C X. VDD minus IDQ plus plus what? Okay. So in this equation, you can then be all the parameters are known. So this is known. So we're going to solve for the screw. Sorry. So it will be a square um, equation that you solve for IDQ, meaning that it will only have inter one intersection of IDQ, one solution. Use this um, parallel equation to solve for IDQ. Right. OK? Yes, you're right. Correct. Okay. We can probably go through an example so you get a sense. For this this structure, let's say if I'm setting If I'm setting W over L, so the parameters we need are device parameters W over L, which is 5 micron over 1.18 micron. And assuming that RS equals to 0.2 K ohm, RD is 1 K ohm. Uh, assuming our mu and Zx is 100 micro and both square. And then we just simply insert the number VDD equals to 1.8 volt VTH. These are device parameters 0.50. So once we have this parameter, you simply insert into the equation, and then we solve for IDQ. Well, then the one half, if I'm using the unit of a micro, a micro amp, this will be 0.1 milliamp volt square. So I'm using, if I'm using milliamp, this will be 0 0.1, 5, 1 1.8. You simply insert the numbers. And this is, VDD is 1.8 volt, minus, this is the unknown we want to solve for. This will be 1.2K times minus uh, 0.5. So we're going to simply insert all the numbers and then solve for this equation then we can actually get IDQ approximately around 1 point, a point uh, 0.56 million. So you can simply insert and find the results. Okay, just to give you a number to get a sense as to how does one determine if I'm placing these parameters, what is the result? Or you can actually do the in reverse. If I want to set it this way, what, uh, what should I determine on my resistors levels? Okay. And then I actually forgot one of the parameters, which is RG. So, because in this equation, you actually don't see the effect of RG. So I'm going to come back and ask you this. Let's say, in this case, my RG, I'm just arbitrarily setting so what is the impact of having RG? It does not impact my biasing condition. So I'm coming back to my first question is that, why do you need RG or should I, is it possible if I set RG to open or set it to short? What, what, what's the purpose of having an RG? Or how does this level affect uh, the operation of this circuit? Any thoughts? Why do you have a RG? 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 Why do you have a RG?
<笑>对，可是就是 What is the impact？ 他都不是 s e l f i r e 那我可以不要，就是 short， short 他也是啊。如果我 short， 好，就是我看我们来讲两个 extreme 的 case， 就是 there's two extreme case。What if？ So I'm gonna give you a number. It's typically a intermediate level. So you can think about it. There's two possibility. One is you can short it. So Rg approaching zero. If Rg approach zero, what happens is that your input equals the output. There's no amplification, right? Because it's short. So this is not this does not work. Input uh, equals the output. Therefore, it does not allow there's there be a voltage difference between the two. Your signal will be the same, right? So what if R G equals to infinite? So I could actually set R G to infinite. So the point is that why do I need an R G at the, at the beginning, even though there's no current? So what? There must be a reason why you need R G because if without R G, what is the result? The result is that if I'm without R G, meaning that. My gate voltage. This terminal is floating. So I want to mention one of the key concepts is that even though we set the current to be zero, it does not mean even I said I C I G equals to zero. It doesn't mean I G equals to zero. You know the difference. So meaning that I still need to have there's DC current, which is the stabilized current, and this include both DC and AC. So this include both DC plus AC current, meaning mostly in this case charging current. So anytime I want to set this potential, how does this potential is being set? The current still coming in to charge this capacitor to this level because we're not talking about capacitance effects. But in real case, this will still need to be charged up to the level. For example, if this is one volt, it has to be charged up through this pathway. So the charging current, this is just to provide a pathway for charging current. If you do not connect connect it, it will be floating. Therefore, there's no charging current. The potential may not be changed. So you you're providing this is the key of having this is to provide a charging pathway. Of IG, I should say IG, AC. When when you're trying to reach that uh, that particular biasing level, so you need to have a pathway for this capacitance. There's a capacitance to charge up to the level that you need. Otherwise, it will be a floating node. There's no charging path. Okay, so there will only be displacement displacement charge. So that's the main difference why we wanted to have, even though you don't for DC in in the overall equation, you don't actually see RG in this equation, but still it plays an important role in making sure this level equals to this level at. Steady state. Otherwise, right? Because there's no current path, so it's only for charging. Once it reaches steady state, there's no constant leakage current from the gate from that terminal. Okay. So, um, let's talk about what. As I said,、uh, these are. Very non-common solutions. This is just an example. We go through textbooks, so allow you to have a basic understanding of how discrete biasings are done. But in most cases, we're going to talk about the third most common places. Is let's talk about common source stage. So what we want to actually do, common source stage. 
biasing, the most common biasing scheme is actually this. Uh, remember, we talked about the CMOS amplifier. The CMOS amplifier is not, uh, even though it actually used both sides, the transconductance of both sides to amplify a circuit, but it's, not, it's very hard to control. So more commonly, if you wanted to have a common source stage with a better biasing than these two, the solution will be this. This is called... with a current source. Remember, if you're looking at a PMOS, or any transistor for that matter, so for a PMOS, this is a P, uh, we have an N and a P, and this will be my input terminal. Let me just make sure that it does not, we're not considering DC level anyway. And couple out to, yeah. So this is a typical common source architecture, right? So to set the level of the, uh, DC biasing, I wanted to simply assume uh, using a PMOS load. Or you can refer it to as a com uh, PMOS common source. Uh, Current source. This is the PMOS load. I'm using a PMOS to construct a current source. And how does one construct this? I'm just assuming that this is VP is biased at a good at a fixed level. I should say a, a fixed bias level. So once this is being done, if I'm trying to plot the results of this, let's say if this is VO, IO. I'm plotting uh, VO will be VS, VSD. So if I have a PMOS, if I'm plotting VSD versus ID, it will look something like this, right? Because it's VSD rather than VDS. So this will be VO is equals to IO. So if I could make sure that my transistor M1 is M1, M2. If I could make sure that my transistor M2, this is M2. Uh, in sad, meaning that I'm making sure that this level does not rise high enough to suppress, to, to be low enough to... The difference between the two is within, let's say this is VD set. In this case, it will be um, VSG minus VT HP. Because it's a PMOS, right? So as long as I'm making sure that this voltage across PMOS is larger than VD set, then I can make sure that this, is, this looks like a current source, equivalent to a current source because it's a flat, mostly flat. OK? So then, how does one determine the current? How does one determine this current? My ID, my biasing current, I, I should say IO, equals to IDQ equals to 1 half mu P Cox WRL VP PDD minus V. Minus uh, Just make sure that I got it right. So it will be determined by the saturation current of M2. 
So that will give me IDQ. So what I need to do is to make sure that my VB satisfies this. So all I need to do is to make sure the voltage at this terminal satisfy whatever I wish to obtain as the biasing condition. Right? So this will actually make the job much easier. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later, but when we talk about small signal analysis. But this, this would then allow me to design my current independently, my biasing current simply by VB. And then my loading effect, meaning the output resistance, will be determined by the transistor sizing rather than depending on the, the VB. Therefore, I would then be allowed to independently optimize the overall performance of the circuit. So we're going to talk about that when we talk about GAN analysis. Okay, so these are the, the ways of biasing uh, MOSFET and, and in integrated solution, these are typically used in integrated because it does not require any passive component. Passive component are resistors. Resistors are, as I said, very expensive and hard to make in integrated circuit. Therefore, you want to avoid that, and this is much easier, allowing, allowing you to set your location simply by determining this VP. Now, I'm going to talk about how does one control this more reliably in a, mirror, in a current mirror structure. Okay? So this is what I would like to talk about in terms of biasing. And next, we're going to, of course, start the an uh, analysis of these three types of structure and talk about uh, its small signal behavior, especially input, output resistance, and voltage gain. So we're going to start with, of course, a common source stage. So first is a common source stage. There's, of course, two variations. One is with source degeneration, the other is without. And a typical common source stage looks something like this, right? You have a loading resistor. OK? And then I'm just going to be, to be more precise. I'm just going to use the couple just to make sure that you don't need to deal with the biasing, com biasing level, uh, biasing uh, DC analysis. We're just going to talk about the small signal analysis. So for this, you can simply use the two-pole model. So if I insert the two-pole model, uh, the, the small signal model, then this will be my equivalent circuit. Small signal. So anytime we want to find or the three key parameters for the two-pole model, you generate your small signal equivalent circuit. So the circuit will look something like this, the transistor M1. We then have, we only have one VGS and then transconductance voltage control current source. And then you can connect it to, I'm going to introduce you see, sometimes I introduce RO without introducing. Uh, when you introduce, is, um, when I include it without too much complication, I already include it. If it requires more complication, would then consider with or without. Okay. So then this would then be connected to RD. Okay. And so I would then have my input terminal. Small signal, you viewed capacitance as short. So this will be input. This will be my output terminal. So to find these three parameters, you could actually very easily write down Rn will be what? Input resistance. You don't need to think about it. Should be infinite, correct? Yeah. So this is much easier if we doing. We don't need, even need to consider if you're coming in from the gate. Input resistance 
is infinite. But I want to emphasize this is not the same as impedance. It still has non-infinite impedance because uh, impedance meaning that you need to consider capacitive components. In this case, this is just a parallel play capacitor, remember? So there's still charging current when we talk about impedance. This is for resistance, okay? So if we only talk about resistance, then its input resistance is infinite. And it was then, uh, we're gonna talk about its output avial. But then defined by VL, V in. And then it will be minus GM VGS times these two uh, resistance in parallel. Therefore, I'm including RO without too much hassle. You can include it. And then uh, input equals to VGS. V in equals to VGS is very straightforward. Therefore, you will get a gain of minus GM RO. As I said, if, the, if you're doing this circuit as a discrete circuit design, I will, uh, let's, let's just write down output resistance. You can follow the test circuit analogy, but what, ha what happened is that your output resistance will simply be RO in parallel RD. Because if it is short, then you won't see any current. Okay, so you basically have the three key parameters uh, obtained, very straightforward. One of the things I want to emphasize is that if I'm doing this circuit, as I said, this is like a discrete, uh, discrete common source stage, meaning that I'm buying this transistor and putting the, these resistors on. Without the integrate, uh, the upper, upper frame is the integrated version, meaning that you put it in an integrated circuit. So in this case, I, I would, in most cases, I will have RD much, much uh, smaller than RO. The reason why that is is because the, if your RD is very large, one, what it means is that it will then will, will actually push this voltage down so that the M1 will never be in saturation. So the reason why, in, in a reasonable current level, you would then have RD much, much smaller than RO for, to ensure to ensure that uh, the B drain voltage VDS is larger than VD set. To ensure that device is operating saturated, that's one of the key why in this type of design your RD cannot be very high. If you want to have high gain, it's very hard to obtain that because once you're increasing your RD, then this DC current would then suppress the drain voltage so that device will no longer be in saturation. So that's one of the key challenges in this type of design if I'm using a resistive load, okay? So if you, if you want to consider a variation, this is a variation of redesigning your circuit by determining your current independent of its output resistance. Therefore, your resistance and current level is not linked by a straight line. So this will then will allow us to have more freedom in determining its biasing current, biasing current level and also its operation level. Let me uh, compare this two a little bit. So let's talk about this small signal model. So you can actually do the common stage with uh, current source load. And then, So the circuit in the bottom with PMOS load. I could also construct its uh, small signal model. So for this circuit, 
Let's construct a small signal equivalent circuit as well for a PMOS load. Uh, common source stage. So you can also start with, the, because there's two transistors, so I'm going to construct the small signal, VGS1. And then I have the small signal, uh, GM1, VGS2. Anytime you have two trans, uh, more than one transistors, I will actually urge you to label it so that you won't confuse yourself. I'm confusing. So this is for M1. So M1 is uh, source is grounded. And then this will be my input terminal, Vn. Right, the gate is connected to the input terminal. And then there is a RO1. So this, this whole thing is M1. So the drain is connected to M2, the drain of M2. So for PMOS, it's actually having an identical RO2. And then this is connected to a, the same drain. So this is VGS, GM2, VGS2. OK? So this is the drain. Let me be all over. So this is drain one, this is drain two, this is source one, gate one, okay? And the source, source two, this is source two. Source two is connected to VDD, therefore is what? It's AC ground. So this is VDD, AC ground. So this is source two. Source two is VCC AC ground. And then your gate, remember I have a gate, uh, gate two. Gate two is what? What is gate two? Connected to. Hmm? Gate two is connected to what? to VB, which is VB. The gate, gate, this is gate two, right? Gate two, gate one, drain one, drain two, source two, source one. Okay? So where does gate two go? Gate two, VB. VB is a fixed, vi fixed voltage, it's a DC fixed voltage. Therefore, gate two is what? Grounded, correct. So this is connected to ground. That is to say, this voltage across is VGS2 equals to zero, correct. So there's no. So whatever you see out of this, this is, uh, let me try. Even though I have the whole transistor, but the transistor, the small signal model will actually contribute, the whole transistor will actually contribute this to the circuit. You don't actually see this. Even though this is M, M2 loading, PMOS load. PMOS load only contribute R2 to the equivalent circuit. So my equivalent circuit will simply be simplified as this. RO1, RO2, uh, GM1, VGS, VGS1. So this is where the input is. This is the output. Okay? So this will then be equivalent to a much easier result. 
So if I want to construct the three parameters, I can simply write it down. Its input resistance is still infinite. Its voltage gain will then become minus GM1 times R01 in parallel R02. Okay. And finally, the upper resistance will be what? What do you think? R1. R01 in power. Okay, so what is the benefit? Once again, I want to emphasize once again, what is the difference between this one and the main, I, I should say, what I want to emphasize is that um, the freedom it allows us to have in, in terms of designing a DC and AC component. So when I design my DC component, for example, if I want to choose my IDQ with this circuit, I want to make sure that with this circuit, let's say it's typically, in most cases, it will be somewhere depending, mostly depending on RD, right? So this will be approximately, in most cases, it will be. First, you need to realize that your output resist RD cannot be very high to make sure that this happens. And the other thing is that anytime you want to determine, to design the circuit, one of the key important uh, components is that you want to make sure that VDD minus IDQ RD, this needs to be larger than VD, VGS minus VTH. It's threshold. So once this has to hold, therefore, there's very, very small room for you to adjust these two components. You may not independently design them because it will then push this device very easily down to saturation. So that's the, when you design this structure, it will make the flexibility a lot, uh, much less flexibility in this type of design. But in this case, if I'm using this, remember, I could design my IDQ simply by setting the VB. Of course, there's still constraint when we talk about the, the margins, but the other thing is that it's skin will actually depending on RO. So you only need to look for ways to make sure that your output resistance is high enough to get high gain without even to consider it. So my GM can be independently designed because I could actually set the current level to whatever I want and it does not eat away the voltage drop between the two, okay? DC voltage drop. So that's the, that's the main flexibility of having this type of current load design. So in most cases, we're gonna use current load design in future, especially in integrated uh, circuit uh, analysis.